what's going on everybody it's your guy realistic and i'm doing another tutorial for soundoracle.net and in this video what i'm going to be going over is clip gain automation versus compression but first before we get into that if you haven't already be sure to subscribe to our youtube page that way you can stay up to date with videos just like this one and you'll get tips and tricks directly in your mobile feed when you subscribe to the channel also oracle and i have a brand new online mastering course out right now called the art of mastering it's filled with over 75 videos and nine hours worth of professional mastering techniques so what i'll do is i'll go ahead and put a link in the description below for you to be able to access that now now let's start getting into clip gain automation versus compression. So to start off, I actually use a combination of both because I think both of these hand to hand work really well. And this is what's going to yield really great professional sounding results. It's a little bit more work, but what we're trying to go for is higher quality, more professional quality. That's one of the things that we do on this channel. We're not the channel that's always looking for the, the quick shortcut or the, the way to get out of working hard. Uh, we're always trying to give you the information that's going to actually be useful in the professional world that we actually use on mainstream records, not the shortcuts that you see on tutorials uh, that are just cluttered all over Instagram to quick get you to, to lure you in because they're the easy, quick way to be able to do it. So what the, the difference here is, is clip gain here. So what we're actually going to do is on the, uh, on our track here, it's going to be, this is our clip gain right here. So the difference is between this and our inserts here, because the compressor is going to be inserts is this right here, the clip gain, anything that's done on this clip gain right here, this is all going to be pre insert. So this is going to be, it's going to affect everything that's on the insert chain. Uh, and so it's going to affect, uh, you know, if we got auto tune on, it's going to affect auto tune our EQs. A lot of people like to use an EQ to cut before they can press. So it's going to affect that uh, saturation. It's going to affect anything that uh, it, it's going to be going into our inserts is going to affect anything with that. Whereas compression, it's going to, um, you know, be based on the signal that's coming into it. So if we've done any boosting or cutting, it's going to affect that, but it's not going to affect what happened before the, the cutting that we did on eq if we did some cutting beforehand and so those are the the two that's the like the major difference pre-insert versus post whatever you put before the compressor and so i really believe that if we go ahead and we take the time and we adjust the clip gain on parts that are too loud or too quiet it, what it's going to do is because we're still going to use a compressor what it's going to do is it's going to be a, a lighter work on the actual compressor uh, versus if we got things that are kind of like, uh, you know, really quiet, really loud and medium, the compressor is going to be doing things where it's doing negative three uh, gain reduction, then it's going to be doing like nine dB of gain reduction, and then it's not going to do any gain reduction at all. It's just going to overwork the compressor. So this just kind of gives a lighter workload on that. So before we get into that, I just want to uh, kind of clear the air on two uh, questions. One's a really common question and another's a question I got asked once. But the, the common question, I know a lot of you are probably already thinking, well, wh why do that if I got Vocal Rider? So with Vocal Rider, um, if you're in a pinch and you're in a hurry, yeah, go ahead and use that. But the, the problem with Vocal Rider is uh, it's not very consistent. It's not very uh, accurate all the time. Um, I find that it uh, it can kind of give you uh, worse results and it kind of makes the, the record sound like shit, to be honest. Uh, you can argue all day, you know, with me that, you know, that's it's this or that. Uh, if you're the type of person that likes to take shortcuts, let's just right now agree to disagree. Uh, you like to take shortcuts and take the easy way out. I like to do things the right way so we can just end it there and we don't have to have a big discussion in the comment section because uh, we see things differently. But I always take, uh, I always like to go about quality over speed. Uh, and I think that's the difference between me and someone that's looking for shortcuts. You could also argue with me that, uh, well, you just don't know how to use Vocal Rider. I do, and I feel like my resume and accolades do speak for themselves. But if you feel like I don't know what I'm talking about, hey, 
that's on you then. But anyways, that's why I don't use Vocal Rider because uh, a few things with Vocal Rider besides its inconsistency and not always being accurate, it's also an algorithm and it's just kind of based on what it, it thinks it's doing. And I feel like my ears, I don't think that that Vocal Rider is going to be able to uh, outdo my ears because there are situations where something uh, like a, an, a piece of audio may appear to be louder uh, and that's what it's going to go off of is uh, Vocal Rider is actually going to go off of uh, the level of this. Uh, and sometimes things appear to be louder, but they don't actually sound louder. And sometimes things appear to be quieter, but they don't actually sound quieter. And Vocal Rider isn't going to know how to really uh, do that. Do that. And sometimes also Vocal Rider can be a little too uh, sudden and stuff. So then you can kind of hear it. I can always hear it too. Whenever someone uses Vocal Rider in a track, I can instantly hear it because I can hear what it's doing. So it just, you know, we want to be able to do this without it being heard. Uh, the other thing is I've only got asked this once, but somebody had asked me, well, why not just automate the threshold? Um, well, the reason why is I actually think that's a lot more work because if you're automating the threshold a bunch here, uh, then you got to pay attention to the actual uh, clip gain uh, or what the audio looks like. You got to pay attention to what it sounds like and you got to pay attention to the threshold. That's going to be a lot more work. Also, too, if we're focusing on the threshold, then it eliminates because a lot of people like to put an EQ before the compressor to cut frequencies before it hits the compressor. Automating the threshold isn't going to uh, impact anything that we put before the compressor, and we uh, actually want to avoid that. And then also the other reason, too, is if later down the road uh, we want to go back and we want to adjust the threshold, we're like, ah, I want a little bit more compression, I want a little bit less compression. Well, if we've automated that, we've now taken that option off the table because, you know, automation just kind of takes away that static pass that we want to be able to have. Okay, so now that we kind of cleared that out of the, the air here, let's go ahead and uh, kind of compare here and, and see what it is. So this uh, version right here uh, that I got up here is actually uh, a version that I've already went ahead and done the manual clip gain adjustments here. Uh, and then down here is actually the original version of what it sounded like before I made any uh, clip gain adjustment so we can already see there's some differences between that you know this part this whole phrase is a lot louder this individual uh word here is much uh louder and uh, got a higher spike same with this over here has got a, a higher spike um, even things like this right here, this was a lot lower. So I had brought that up, uh, so we can kind of see the difference and I'll, I'll show you the, um, the difference between the, the two here of, uh, of what they do here. So if I go ahead and we, we listen to the vocal, uh, what we're going to hear is we're going to, uh, hear the version that I had edited here. So pay attention what the compressor is doing here. Yeah. Almost got trapped, but I escaped it. Still with the people I came with. Underground star but not famous Though fame is the reason I came in Married to the money that's alter so you see that we're able to stay within uh, 2 to 3 dB of gain reduction. The compressor is not having to overwork. We're reducing any type of pumping or squashing. Now let's go ahead and put the OG version in here and kind of pay attention to what's happening with the gain reduction. Yeah, almost got trapped but I escaped it. Still with the people I came with. Underground star but not famous. Though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altered. On God's path and I falter. So you see the gain reduction is actually all all over the place you know we're like negative 2 db we're negative 3 there's parts where there's even as high as negative 9 then there's negative 5 and then there's no gain reduction at all it's just all over the place so uh, the uh gain re so the compressor is constantly having to work it it puts a lot it puts a lot of workload on the compressor and then we can start to hear the how the compressor reacts and overworks it's just a little bit too much and we can actually get cleaner results uh, by having, you know, by going in and manually doing it. Again, I know it's time consuming, but this is what happens on a lot of big records. Uh, if you hear like a record by like Beyonce or Ariana Grande or Justin Bieber, one of those really big records, you know, those those big hits and ones that are winning all these Grammys and this and that, this type of work gets put into that. So uh, if you're looking for a really professional sound, this is kind of one of the, the big things that you can do to be able to do that. And another 
another thing too that I like about manually doing the the clip gain here. Uh, I don't know if you've ever had it, but if you you know compress something where you haven't done the manual clip gain, sometimes like um, when the artist breathes, uh, the compressor isn't gonna trigger when it breathe uh, when the person breathes. So if you got the compressor just hitting hard, uh, squashing things, you know their voice will sound like this, and then they'll breathe. <gasps> And then it will sound a lot louder, even though it's not louder. It's because the compressor the compressor is squashing down all the vocals. And then when the person breathes, the compressor doesn't recognize that uh, it's not the bre the breath isn't hitting the threshold. So now it appears louder. So let me go ahead and actually show you uh, what I'm doing here to to do this. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll put down the edited version down, and I'll make a copy of the OG version here. Uh, and we'll go ahead and make changes. And so what I do here is uh, I usually just uh, switch to slip mode, just uh, option two uh, on your keyboard here. If you're in Pro Tools, you can also hold down the uh, command button and it will kind of give you a free if you're on grid mode. Uh, you see, I, I kind of move when I'm on grid mode and it snaps to the grid. But if I hold down command, it kind of gives me uh, a free option to do that. And I use that a lot when I'm doing other things. But when it comes to this, I actually just slip, uh, switch over to slip mode mode here uh, so I can just kind of move freely. All right, so then there's uh, kind of like two ways to do this inside of uh, Pro Tools. One way is you can, uh, you know, Command E, separate the, the clip here, and then we can kind of pull down the uh, clip gain right there. Uh, and then, you know what I'm saying, kind of move things around like that. Right. The other way that we can do here, and it's the way that I normally uh, go about this, is uh, you hold down Shift Control here. Like you select a, a clip, you hold down Shift Control, and I can just kind of freely move things uh, up and down by scrolling my uh, mouse wheel there. So that's the way that I normally do it because it's a lot less time consuming and it kind of automatically fades it for you as well. So that's why I do that. But for the sake of the video, I think uh, me separating it and showing you the clip gain will be more uh, intuitive for a learning uh, point of view and then uh, what's cool about Pro Tools you just uh, if you want to fade everything afterwards because you know what I wasn't doing any crossfades reason why is I'll do the whole track and then afterwards we can just hit command F and then we can do like a batch fade here we can choose the length of our fade in our crossfades and our fade out so if I go ahead and do that hit OK you see that it just did a batch fade and no matter what we select if we uh, do that it's going to uh, impact everything it's going to crossfade everything that we selected as far as where chops are so um, that's something else that you can do here. So yeah, I'll just kind of literally go in there and one of the things too that I like to do is I actually like to listen because like I said, sometimes things may uh, appear like they're louder. Like for instance, this may appear like it's louder right here, but maybe it doesn't actually sound louder. So let me go ahead and bypass the compressor. Stay with the people I came with. Underground star but not famous. Yeah, like I feel like that's not like super loud. And again, that's like something that vocal rider would vocal rider would do is that would push that down, and that pro part probably doesn't need to be uh, pushed down. But anyways, other things that I may do is I may uh, raise the the volume of certain areas here. Uh, sometimes there's like uh, whole phrases, like for instance. Um, this whole phrase, I know we chopped it up, but this whole phrase right here is probably a little too loud anyway, so I'd probably pull that down. And then this individual part here, I'd probably go back and pull that down. This part definitely needs to be uh, brought down a lot more, so I'd kind of bring that down. And then, yeah, again, I would just go through the whole track like that and uh, do that, kind of pull things down. And I, again, I always want to make sure I listen because just because something visually looks like it's louder or quieter doesn't mean that it always is. So now that we've kind of done that, Let's go ahead and compare the original version one more time to the uh, version that we had um, prior. So again, I'll have everything um, bypassed here and we'll we'll give this a listen here. Underground star but not famous, though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altar. Now let's listen to the original version. Underground star but not famous, though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altar. On God's path and I falter. So we can hear it, right? It's not super consistent. Let's again hear the uh, uh, edited version. Underground star but not famous, though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altar, on God's path and I falter. Right, really even, we haven't even compressed anything. And I honestly think a lot of people will ask me about compression. And I always say, even though it's time consuming, the best form of compression is volume automation. It's the difference between fast food and a home cooked meal right? The home cooked meal is always going to taste better. But 
it's more time consuming and it takes more work. The fast food doesn't taste as great, but you can get it right away. That's the difference. If you want quality, you know, do this. If you want just quick results, you know, do the other way. And like I said, I do do a combination of both because after I go ahead and edit all the clip gain, I'm going to throw a compressor on there and then I'm just going to kind of aim for anywhere from negative two to negative three dB of gain reduction. So let's go ahead and uh, check out the differences now and put the compressor in and check out the difference between the two. So let's listen to uh, the edited version and kind of watch what the compressor is doing again. Underground star but not famous. Though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altered. On God's path and I falter. Right, we can hear that it's consistent. We can see it as well. Let's listen to the original version now. Pay attention to the gain reduction and also pay attention to what we're hearing with the compressor. Underground star but not famous. Though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altered. On God's path and I falter. Life is a bitch at all. And then one more time with the edited version. Underground star but not famous. Though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altered. On God's path and I falter. So much more consistent, right? All right, now let's go ahead and listen to it within the confines of the actual uh, beat so we can hear the music behind it. Here's the edited version. Underground star but not famous. Though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altered. On God's path and I falter. All right, and let's listen to the OG version. Underground star but not famous. Though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altered. On God's path and I falter. And the edited version. Underground star but not famous. Though fame is the reason I came in. Married to the money that's altered. On God's path and I falter. So by taking the time to do that, this uh, edited version fits within the track a lot better. He actually starts to feel like he's more a part of the music. The compressor isn't working as much. We can't hear so much what the compressor is doing. It's not squashing parts. It's not overdoing it. There's not parts where it's too quiet and then parts where it's just pumping too much and so this is why I definitely recommend doing that I know there's tons and tons of YouTube and Instagram channels out there that uh, are going to show you the shortcuts and the easy ways to go about doing that uh, and again that's cool if you're the type of person that wants to go about doing that you know what I'm saying just you know go ahead that that's your that's your style but this is the way that if you're looking for quality this is what's going to do this and this is also uh, a big reason why you see uh how i do things and where the type of people that i get to work with versus you know other people that show shortcuts they may have big numbers on youtube and stuff like that but you know who are they really working with but if you go ahead and you actually look at my resume and credits, you actually you can see that I work in the uh, industry with mainstream artists that people have heard of. And, you know, that's one of the reasons why I get gigs like that is because I take the time to focus on the quality. So if you're looking for opportunities like that, if you care more about the quality than you do about the speed and rushing through things, this is definitely a way to go. So like I said before, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That way you can stay up to date with videos just like this and you'll get tips and tricks directly in your mobile feed. Also, Oracle and I do have that new online mastering course out right now called The Art of Mastering. I'll put a link in the description below. Until next time. Hey, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to our channel right here so you can stay up to date with our latest videos on mixing, mastering, and production. And you can also check out some of our suggested videos here, here, and here. And of course, if you're looking for premium loops and samples, we got the best on the market. You can check out soundoracle.net. We got plenty to choose from.